Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Fantasy Bros Football Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Harris. You can find me on Twitter at DanHarris80. It is Friday. We got a lot of games to get to here for Championship Week. But first, as we do every week, let's welcome in Dr. David Chow. You can find him on Twitter at ProFootballDoc or his website at SickScore.com, S-I-C, or ProFootballDoc.com should take you there as well. Doc, how are you today? Good, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. I'm glad we could fit it in. I know uh, we're both busy. Doc, it's a weird week. You know, I want to start with Lamar Jackson. That's a guy who I'm getting a ton of questions about. He's not ruled out yet. Uh, He didn't practice again today on Friday. There was the video of him on practice on Wednesday, which to my very untrained eye did not look great, followed by two DNPs. So, I mean, just basically, Doc, I I know you like I ask you the specific questions, but I'm going to take the step back and ask you the broad question. What do you see on that video and what does it make you think about Lamar Jackson's availability this weekend and his potential effectiveness? For those watching the video, uh, podcast video, maybe you noticed my eye roll there. <laughs> uh, look, last week we talked about how he wasn't going to play. And Coach Harbaugh is the greatest, right? Optimistic. And, you know, it's part of his job to coach speak and, and the thing. So no hate there to coach Harbaugh. But we said on Fantasy Pros, even early last week, Lamar is not playing. And we said last week, this week is in doubt too. And as soon as I saw that video, I said, there's no way that he's playing. Uh, Harbaugh can coach speak all he wants. We're really hopeful, really want him to. Look, Lamar wants to play, which is why he tried it. But you cannot speed up a bone bruise. You could speed up an ankle sprain. You cannot speed up a bone bruise. That's biology. So not only is he not playing this week, week 18 now is no guarantee. If you go back and look at that video from Wednesday when he was, quote, limited practice. Look, Dan, you know this. Limited practice means one play or 99 right? right? So he was out there, so he qualified. But if you watch how he moved, I mean, I hate to say it, I might have been able to move more quickly, and that's not saying a lot. And if you watch the video very closely, I believe it's the quarterback's coach. I don't know him personally. He looks like he's in his mid-50s. He's got a little bit of a gut. And after Lamar throws a pass, they're, quote, walk jogging to the to the line of scrimmage. And the quarterback's coach has to slow down to let Lamar catch up to tell him something. Well, what does that tell you right here? I mean, Lamar's a mobile guy. He's not mobile. I mean, at this point, I mean, I, look, you can hope all you want, whatever. But as a fantasy manager, you better have plan B. And, uh, you know, uh, whatever it is and and obviously what it means for receivers and running backs and the all the, the downwind stuff, I don't see how he plays. Now, you have to understand, I get it's important. And it's playoff time and positioning, but you can't jeopardize the guy's career playing through a bone bruise, making it worse. So he's out this week and maybe next week, too. So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, such a, you know, tough break for the Ravens, who were eight and three at one point, looked like a a real contender for the Super Bowl and now are fighting for their lives to make the playoffs. Uh, Doc, let's talk about another quarterback. It's Jimmy Garoppolo. As we record this, we haven't seen anything yet on Friday, but a UCL tear in his thumb and a fracture. I mean, we may know by the time people listen to this that he's ruled out for this week, but without knowing that, Doc, is there a chance he plays this week? And even is he going to play next week going forward, do you think? Well, look, there's always a chance, right? Now, remember, Jimmy G, it happened late in the second quarter and he finished the game, okay? So there's a chance. But early this week, at the YouTube channel, Six Score, et cetera, and at the website, I said it's Trey Lance time. And it's Trey Lance time for the rest of this season. The olecloudal ligament, this side of the thumb, it affects your grip. You can't accurately spin and throw the ball with a UCL. The fracture is not a big deal. It's an avulsion. It's just an olecloudal ligament tear. So why doesn't he go surgery like Drew Brees last year, the year before, miss six weeks and come back? Because there's not six weeks left. Right. And, you know, immobilization will get him there, too. But you can't immobilize it. You can't. It's that's asking too much. And if you hear Mike Shanahan's and Kyle Shanahan's comments, um, you know, I still say San Diego Chargers. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Kyle Shanahan, uh, you know, Trey Lance is a good month. I mean, it's Trey Lance time this week and next week. 
And uh, look, this may be the end of Jimmy G in a 49er uniform as well. And uh, I don't see how they push him through through this, uh, just from an accuracy perspective. And next week isn't going to change anything. Uh, you know, I don't see how he plays. Well, based on all the questions I've gotten so far this week, Doc, uh, I bet Trey Lance is going to either win a lot of people their fantasy championships or lose a lot of people their fantasy championships because everybody wants him in their starting lineup. Uh, let's talk about Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Again, we haven't seen it yet. Maybe by the time you're listening to this, he's been ruled out. But, you know, they called it a collarbone at first, and then it he was deemed week to week after positive results. Do you think he's going to be able to suit up this week? And if so, do you think that he'd be able to carry a full running back workload? I never thought it was true collarbone. I thought it was the end of the clavicle, like an AC joint sprain. And if this were playoffs for real for the Chiefs, I believe they would shoot it up and he would go and play. Because of where the Chiefs are, because it's week 17, I think they rest him to get him 100% for the playoffs and go with plan B. And this is where return to play, we've always talked about, it isn't just about the medical status. The, it's the medical status, what the player thinks, and what the team wants to do. And my guess is medically they say they could shoot it up and play. The player says, oh, I can go. But I, I just don't see Andy Reid and company forcing the issue, go with plan B and get a healthy Clyde Edwards-Hilaire for the playoffs. Yeah. I think that's what most fantasy managers are expecting as well. And Daryl Williams makes a fine start this week. Uh, let's talk about, uh, let's go to James Conner, Doc, because this one's tough. He's got a heel injury. I don't remember it happening in the game, like a specific player or anything like that. Everybody thought he was going to suit up. Then it's Christmas and he doesn't suit up. And, uh, you know, nobody knows what to do. And now he's going to be a game day decision again. Can you give us any insight whatsoever on what's going on with Conner? Well, the good news is, you know, you don't play running back on your heels, right? You play it on the balls of your feet. <laughs> the bad news is obviously you missed some time and Chase Edmonds is back, right? So <clears throat> they've been kind of 1A, 1B. And so, look, from a fantasy perspective, and I'm no expert, I'm eliminated now, made the playoffs, but that's about it, limped into the playoffs. <laughs> I mean, uh, all the quarterbacks are, I mean, whatever. My point is that, depends on what options you have, right? I mean, if you have a viable number one guy that's not James Conner, maybe you got to go that way. Because even if he does play, there's going to be some split there, being that Chase Edmonds is now healthy. And that's the way they've been, go been going all year. So, But if you don't have another choice, then you might just have to, you know, take your chances. A lot of people are going to be looking at the Eagles running back situation this week, Doc, with Miles Sanders ruled out. Jordan Howard, you know, people thought would be the guy, but then he left last week with what they described as a stinger. He missed practice early in the week, came back to practice, looked a little bulky, looked like he had some protective gear on, perhaps. He's questionable. I think in the past, Doc, he has suffered a, quote, stinger and missed the next game. I guess, do you think that Howard's going to be able to suit up here? And if so, do you expect any limitations for him? Well, here's the risk with Jordan Howard. One, another hit. He's missed multiple games for this in the past. Another hit, and he could be out for the game. So even if he's active and starts, you know, once again, you have to take your chances. And, and our six score will reflect that, that he's not necessarily 100%. And he's literally one hit away, stinger again, and then he's out for the game. The bulky caller stuff is all to protect him. I think if it were a healthy Miles Sanders, they probably would sit Jordan Howard this week. But he might be pressed into service, right? And the Eagles may say, look, we need him. Uh, yeah, there's Boston Scott. Yeah, there's others. But still, they, they need him. And uh, they may just ride him for what he can do uh, as long as he can. Yeah. Last one, Doc, and I, I don't know how much light you can shed on this one. It's the buck. Let's talk about both Bucks receivers here. Mike Evans is off the COVID list. That's good, but we still don't know whether or not he's going to be able to return from his hamstring injury. So you obviously did see that one on video, but we also have Antonio Brown, who uh, uh, reportedly, quote, tweaked his ankle in practice. He'd missed a lot of time with that ankle, and now he's going to be a, a game-time decision, which is just 
the worst possible thing for fantasy managers in a game, by the way, that the Bucks are favored by, you know, 13 points at this point. So I guess, Doc, anything you can shed, any light you can shed on either of the Bucks wide receivers at this point? Well, we hate practice injuries because there's no video and you just don't have any information. Now, remember the first time this season, Antonio Brown had a practice injury. He missed multiple weeks and right. And we talked about it here. There was video where he was limping around like crazy. And quite honestly, that COVID penalty that he took probably wasn't much of a penalty. It probably was, you know, him getting better from his ankle. Now, the question is, last time he was said to, quote, tweaked his ankle, he missed a ton of time. Is this time truly a tweak or not? We don't have any video to go off of, but my hope would be that he can go and he's needed because let me tell you, I don't see Mike. Yes, Mike Evans is off of COVID. The new protocols allow him to come off. I don't see him as 100 anything close to 100%. And given their choice, I think they'd rather rest him and have him healthy for the playoffs, right? Um, Mike Evans, quote, retweaks that hamstring, and he will miss playoff time. Antonio Brown returns that ankle. It doesn't necessarily put him out for the playoffs. So if you're asking me about the two uh, from the outside, not examining either one, I'd say – Antonio Brown medically is the lower risk because the Bucs are trying to win a Super Bowl. They're not trying to win the last two regular season games. So if you're going to risk one, it would be Antonio Brown over Mike Evans because the worst thing you can do is lose Mike Evans to the playoffs because you don't have Chris Godwin. Yeah, Doc. Invaluable information today, invaluable information all season long. It's been a pleasure as always. Please plug everything you do and where everybody can check you out. Well, yeah, we're at uh, Sports Injury Central's a new site. So we're not only doing football, but basketball and all these, you know, Ricky Rubio in games yep. that he tore his ACL. Baseball, if they ever get started back up, we brought on other physicians that are former Major League Baseball physicians and, and you know, the former Chicago Bulls doctor. So we're expanding to a year round uh, thing and uh, hopefully we'll continue to grow and have some uh, fun. But uh, I'll miss these chats. They've been and uh, as I've told you, I've always enjoyed them because to me, it's just a fun conversation. Yeah, I agree. And again, as somebody who uh, gives out fantasy advice, of course, and on Sunday mornings, I feel that uh, my recommendations are always made stronger by having that extra insight that you provide. So I really appreciate it. And again, everybody check out sixsquare.com. I do. That's how I sort of keep up to date on all the latest injury news. All right, everybody, we'll take a very brief break here and then we'll be back with Dan and Kyle in the Dan and Kyle in the morning. Final time for the 2021 season. Yates, how you doing? Doing good. Uh, starting to get a little anxious because we are going to be flying down to Florida tomorrow. Uh, and all four of us, you know, my wife and I, and then the two kids under the age of three and a half. So uh, this will be uh, this will be an experience. The infant flight, Yates. You are a brave man. How old is the little one now? Uh, eight weeks. So we oh. we talked about it. We were like, okay, do we want to drive down? You know, the twenty four hours or whatever it would be, or do we just kind of want like a band aid and rip it off? And yeah. I think that's that's probably the best the best option. Yeah, if you've got to do one of those, it's fine. I will say that uh, not that young, but we flew with our daughter when she was younger than expected, and. It went great, and she was fantastic. So I, I hope the same for you. Uh, but I admit that I doubt it. Good I'm luck, really, though, I'm really not as worried about like the actual flight with the kids. I think they're going to be fine. It's more so like the the pack mule situation with how much stuff we have to bring with two kids under the age of three and a half to the airport. That's my issue. That that is also something. Let's just hope that the flights don't get canceled, given uh, obviously everything Seriously. we've been seeing of late. But regardless, Yates. We don't even have buys this week. We don't even have the Thursday game. We got 16 games to get to, so we got to roll right through it. You know what this is. It's Dan and Kyle in the morning, which is a game-by-game -game breakdown of everything we're going to see for the weekend, all of our start-sit recommendations. But before we get into it, let's do two things. First, let's talk about leaving our review for this show. Now, this is not a contest anymore for the review for this show. Okay, we're past that. This is the last one of the season, the last Dan and Kyle in the morning for the season. If you guys are still listening and you haven't yet left a review, it would be fantastic if you go to wherever you listen to podcasts, Apple Podcasts, CastBox, Spotify, I think does reviews now. If you just leave a review for the show, that is a free and very, very easy way to support the show 
we love you guys. We do this for the listeners. If you guys are still listening now, hopefully you're still in your playoffs and your championship matchup, and hopefully you got some value out of it. So if you want to show support real easily, just leave a review. takes five seconds. And before I started podcasting, I did not realize how much reviews actually help podcasts grow, helps them learn and get their feedback, and we read the reviews and try to incorporate any feedback. So again, really easy. Just leave a review. All right, Yates. As usual, for our last time here, let's start with the over-under challenge. That is sponsored by Caesars, fantasypros.com slash challenge. You guys know, completely free to play. 10 fantasy point over-unders. There are weekly prizes. Hopefully, you've been in it the whole time so you can win the season-long prize, a two-night stay to Caesars, Las Vegas Resort, plus airfare. Again, fantasypros.com slash challenge. Yay, it's Matthew Stafford at Baltimore. 21.7 21.7 fantasy points. Stafford didn't look right this past week, but I think he has a bounce back performance here against the Baltimore secondary, which just cannot stop anyone at this point. So I will take the over. All the passing for Matthew Stafford for sure. Joe Burrow coming off the big game versus Kansas City, 19.3. Chiefs are a tougher defense, but I think points are going to go up on the board in this one. So I will take the over. Dalvin Cook returns at Green Bay, 16.5 fantasy points. With the weather, I think they are going to lean on Dalvin Cook in this one, so I will take the over here as well. Javante Williams at the Chargers, 12.8. Fine line. Uh, I will take the under here because I think that he is going to have to fall into the end zone to uh, take the to hit the over here, and uh, so I'll just play it safe. I'll take the under. Ezekiel Elliott against Arizona, 13.8. Again, he's got to fall, he's got to find the end zone to be able to hit the over here. Now he has a very good chance of doing that. Uh, he does it, I think, at a higher rate than anyone else in the league as far as uh, being able to fall into the end zone. I will still take the under here with Zeke, though. AJ Brown against Miami, thirteen point four. Uh, target volume is going to be there. Tougher matchup, so I will uh, I'll take the under here as well. But it's close. Over under fifteen targets for AJ Brown in this game. Uh, I'll take the slight under. Correct. Jalen Waddell at Tennessee, 12.2. You got to take the over here. Great matchup. He's being force-fed targets. I will take the over. You better take the over on Amon Ross St. Brown at Seattle, 11.7. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a low line there for Amon Ross St. Brown. At this point, I will smash the over. Stevie Lamb against Arizona, 12.8. Uh, I think this is a really good line, and I, I was looking at this earlier. I think it's pretty close. I will lean under here, but again, yeah. really, really close. I'm also going under with this one. I do think that you can attack Arizona a little bit more in the perimeter rather than the slot, so I will lean slightly under, but Mark Andrews against the Rams, 13.9. High line, uh, yeah. but I mean, based on everything that we've seen over the past three weeks, like the numbers are just absurd for Mark Andrews, and it doesn't matter who's throwing him the ball, so uh, I will take the over. I agree with you. Uh, All right, let's get into it. You guys know this is Friday morning. We don't have all the practice reports. We will try to give caveats. There will be major news breaking in the middle of this podcast that we will try to incorporate if best we can. Yates, are you ready to go game by game? Here we go. Let's start with the one that everybody wants to watch, Falcons at Bills. Falcons, uh, Yates, I mean... I guess after last week, I was like, man, I don't want to feel compelled to start Cordero Patterson anymore. Where do you have him ranked this week? I have him just inside the top 24 running backs. So I think that uh, I think he'll still see work, but you, he has to find the end zone. And this is a very, very tough matchup against Buffalo uh, on the ground. So I don't feel super confident starting Cordero Patterson like the way that I was earlier on in the season, obviously. So if you have a better option, I think that you can pivot to him. Give me a couple of guys, Yates, who you're starting over Cordero Patterson. Right yeah, now. so I will, as of right now, like assuming that he's back, I will start Jordan Howard over Cordero Patterson, Melvin Gordon, uh, Javante Williams, even Devin Singletary. I'll start Devin Singletary over Cordero Patterson. I am with you. Uh, you're starting Kyle Pitts, but I am interested where you have him ranked this week, Yates. I have Kyle Pitts currently at tight end nine. Okay, yeah, so a little bit lower, honestly, than both. I'm I'm with you. I have him eighth. So just, you know, he's a guy who, you know, we know he's not going to score the touchdown, of course, because right. he just does not do that. But the yardage is always there. But this isn't the best matchup. How about Russell Gage Yates after a little bit of a disappointing game? Yeah, he's still in the uh, mid-range wide receiver three conversation for me. I've got him parked at uh, wide receiver 31 currently. So this is someone that, you know, safe floor, tougher matchup, uh, obviously against Buffalo and their secondary. Uh, but I do think that you can still look at Russell Gage as, you know, they're going to have Atlanta's going to have to throw. And where is the ball going to go? It's not going to go to any of the other receivers. Uh, Kyle Pitts should be fine, but, uh, you know, Gage has to be involved. So I've still got him there at a mid-range wide, mid-range wide receiver three. Russell Gage or Van Jefferson? Uh, I got asked this on the Wednesday show, uh, and so I said with Gage, I would go it with him if you needed like a safe floor. With Jefferson, if you need that upside, then I would go with Jefferson. For the Bills, you mentioned Devin Singletary, Yates. Where do you actually have him ranked this week? I have him currently at 18 on the week. 
any concerns, Yates, that we're randomly going to wake up and then Zach Moss is going to be, you know, active and Matt Breed is going to be active and Zach Moss is going to lead the way here? Or is he basically in the quote unquote circle of trust for a running back? I think based on the previous track history, we have to be at least concerned uh, that that could happen. But you look at the the snap share, the, you know, the opportunity share over the past few weeks for Devin Singletary, it's, it's not even close. So I think Singletary, we can lean on him, especially in this matchup up against Atlanta. You are starting Josh Allen. You are starting Stefan Diggs. Yates, uh, everybody's back now from the COVID-19 reserve list with the new protocol. So what wide receiver for the Bills are you starting? I'm going to go with Gabriel Davis. Uh, we have Emmanuel Sanders downgraded to DNP on Thursday, yep. which is huge. Uh, so I've been, uh, I had the Discord stages yesterday, which you can join over at fantasypros.com slash chat. We're going to have a ton of stuff in the off season that you want to make sure that you're a part of. So uh, I was, I got a ton of questions about like Gabriel Davis and the, the Bills receivers and stuff like that. And I said, with Davis, the thing that you need to watch is Emmanuel Sanders. You need to be monitoring the reports. Okay, is is Davis going to take over the starting role here for Sanders? And then we got word that he was downgraded to a DNP. So that kind of clears it up where I think if Davis is getting that starting role up against Atlanta, we can comfortably start him as a you know low end to mid range wide receiver three with tremendous upside. Dawson Knox locked in your lineup? Yes, at this point. Yep. Giants at the Bears. Uh, I mean, for the Giants, it's it's really only one guy that we need to talk about, and it's Saquon. And if you made the championship with Saquon on your team, are you starting him in this one? Uh, He was a DNP on Wednesday, upgraded to limited on Thursday. So this is something to monitor, too, where uh, we don't even know if he's going to play this week. So something to monitor. I've got him at RB25 on the week currently. So it's kind of the same thing with Cordell Patterson. Like, you can play him. But if you've got other alternatives, I think that you can comfortably pivot to them. Saquon or Deonta Foreman? I will still go Saquon in that situation. Now, if Saquon's out and Devontae Booker is in, does that make Booker more enticing than Saquon to you? Uh, I think he'll get work. So, I mean, he's a pivot option, right? Like, I'm not going to go out there. If you've got Devontae Booker on your bench and you're, you know, you've got guys like Michael Carter or DeAndre Swift and Ramondre Stevenson, like, I'm not going to be like, yeah, play Devontae Booker over him. But, you know, he's one of the guys that you can pivot to if you need to. He'll see plenty of volume. Yates, we're in championship weekend. Can I safely assume you are starting no other New York Giant on your fantasy team? That is the correct assumption. For the Bears, Yates, how high do you have Dave Montgomery this week? I have David Montgomery currently at RB8. Yeah, you are way too low. I have him at four, and I want you to move him up. Yes, he is going to just have some fun uh, in this game, in, in my opinion. And again, he's just been so involved in the passing game that he's just, you know, his floor at this point, I think, is so solid. How about Mooney here, Yates? And I guess does it matter who the quarterback is for you? It does a little bit. There's a lot of uh, a lot of variables here with this team as we move into Sunday. So we've got Justin Fields limited in practice on Wednesday and Thursday, and then Andy Dalton has returned to full practice. So there's something here to monitor where we might have Andy Dalton as a starting quarterback rather than Justin Fields. And so then also Allen Robinson cleared off the COVID list. He should be back this week. That could take away some targets for Darnell Mooney. There's just a lot going on here. So Mooney is not a like locked in option into my starting lineup. I have him currently at 33, uh, Mm -hmm. which is two spots behind Russell Gage. So I do think that you can still look his way, but I don't know if there's the tremendous upside necessarily with Mooney, uh, regardless of who the quarterback is. Cole Komet's been getting a lot of targets, Yates. Do you have any interest in starting him here? You can pivot to him, but again, we're in championship week. So if you made it to your championship and you don't have like a tight end, uh, you know, higher than tight end 17, which is where I have Komet, then I don't know how you did it. Uh, So Komet for me is someone that you can look at, but would prefer to sit. Yates, I think we need to be honest about our hits and our misses. And I have not been good at ranking DSTs this year, man. Like every streamer that I go after doesn't seem to pan out. But I feel like the Bears are going to be a good one this week. Are you confident in starting the Bears DST? Absolutely. They're a top 10 option. Uh, I mean, you have a combination of Mike Glennon and Jake Fromm this week at quarterback. Like, yeah, we can we can start the Bears DST. I'm fifth on the week if that's worth anything to anyone. Chiefs at the Bengals. This is a game that everybody will be watching. Uh, Let's go with the Bengals here, Yates. And look. I guess let's start with Joe Burrow. And I the question that I have gotten a million times already this week is, are you starting Joe Burrow or Trey Lance, yep. assuming that Trey Lance starts? Is that the one that you're getting as well? I'm getting a ton of that one, too. That's the yep. question, right? And, yep. So what and is it? It's really difficult for me to answer because I have them back-to-back in my quarterback yep. rankings currently. I have Joe Burrow at 9. I have Trey Lance at 10. So I think with – I talked about Trey Lance, and, and I'm sh- sure we'll talk about him in the San Francisco game, but just briefly, like Trey Lance – 
has tremendous upside based on the matchup. He's going up against Houston. He has a, he has top five upside. Uh, but I think there's a little bit of unknown just because like it's week 17. It's your championship week. Are you going to be playing Trey Lance, who we haven't seen really this season? Or are you just going to plug in Joe Burrow because you know and you feel confident that he's going to bring you a safe floor and that you know that he's going to get the job done, right? So I think it, there's a difference here. Like Burrow is the safe floor play. Trey Lance is that swing for the fences upside play uh, just because of the unknown. Now, I'm very confident in Lance's abilities. I'm very confident in what he can do, but it just depends on how risk averse are you, right? Do you want to take that safe floor that guaranteed, you know, 19 fantasy points with Joe Burrow and still he has upside because of the offense? Or do you want that potential like 28 fantasy point game from Trey Lance? Yeah, my cousin, or Aaron's cousin, who I now call my cousin because he's cool and I like him. Um, He listens to this podcast, Yates, and he was asking me, he's like, I just really, really want to start Trey Lance over Tom Brady because I think they're going to dominate that game. And that I think one they're too. just going to yep. run it. Yeah. And I was like, look, I, I that's not how I have it ranked. I don't have it. It's not insane to me, though, right? Like, I, I realistically, I think if you want to, there's the garage door. <laughs> if you want to, and by the way, if everybody knows I was telling Yates, I do not have coffee right now. Uh, Just do some... Some, uh, you know, miscommunication and stuff. So my wife will almost certainly be walking in uh, my office in about two minutes. And I'm going to get a, some coffee and you're going to see a bolt of energy just come <laughs> up through me right there. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't think it's crazy if you start Lance over anybody really this week. Like right. I wouldn't, like you said, but I think if you want to go that route, I, I don't hate it. How about the wide receivers, Yates? I mean, you're obviously starting T. Higgins, of course, and you're still starting Jamar Chase. He had a great game, but obviously been a little inconsistent. What about Tyler Boyd, Yates? He's the forgotten man, but he has been producing pretty consistently. Yeah, he's still someone that you can look at. I've got him at 39 on the week, so a little bit lower. There are other guys that I would play over him, but uh, you definitely can still look at him. I just think that the the likelihood that the production goes more towards T. Higgins and Jamar Chase, that's higher than you know Tyler Boyd being involved enough to push into the top you know 30, top 24, whatever. So I've got him a little bit lower, but you definitely can still look his way. Joe Mixon, obviously, in your lineup. Any yep. interest in C.J. Uzama, Yates? No, not in championship week. For the Chiefs, uh, okay, everybody's back. And we're obviously, I mean, I, we'll just say it. Like, you're writing off, obviously, last week with Tyreek Hill coming back from, from COVID. He was obviously said he was a little fatigued and everything like that. So he's obviously in your starting lineup, as is Travis Kelsey, as is Patrick Mahomes. And we are assuming that Clyde edwards Elair is going to be ruled out for this game. So talk to Correct. me about the running backs. How do you feel about Darrell Williams? Or if you're in a pinch, Derek Gore. Yeah, I've got Daryl Williams at 15 on the week. Cincinnati, tougher run defense. Uh, so I've got Daryl Williams there at 15. And then Derek Gore is someone that you, I mean, you're playing because you have no other option. And if you're in championship week and you have no other option, that's really difficult. I, I can't see that happening. So Derek Gore is all the way outside my top 40 running backs on the week. He, sh he could rip off a long run. He could see uh, some work here. He could fall into the end zone. But I think this is going to be Daryl Williams' backfield. So Derek Gore, really not someone that I'm looking at. Yeah, I, and I am starting uh, Darrell Williams in a championship matchup. And, you know, look, he's, he's you know, going to be involved in the passing game at the very least, and they trust him around the goal line as well. So I agree with you on all accounts there. Dolphins at the Titans. Uh, I mean, we're just avoiding. <laughs> we finally have, like, the real excuse to completely avoid any Dolphins running back, right? Yes, 100%. This was a situation last week where I was like, don't go anywhere near this backfield. And that certainly paid off against uh, the Saints, right? So, yeah, this now you got Phil Lindsay, you got Duke Johnson, Miles. G like, no, just don't go anywhere near this. <laughs> Stay as far away as humanly possible. Yes, where do you actually have Jalen Waddle ranked this week? I have Jalen Waddle all the way up at 12 on the week. Oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, Jalen Waddle or Keenan Allen? I will play Jalen Waddle. Got him yeah, two spots higher than Allen. That's what I'm talking about, Yates. Yeah, so uh, there was this guy. He was uber reliable. Nobody ever really wanted to talk about him, but he never disappointed in the game. And then last week, he got zero official targets in the game against the Saints, and his name is Devontae Parker. Are you avoiding him against a team that's been better against wide receivers of late, but still gives up a ton of points to fantasy wide receivers? Oh, this one, this one hurt last week. I needed three points from Devonte Parker to advance to a championship, uh, and so I did not get that. Obviously, uh, so now I'm playing for the third place title in this league. Uh, it just it killed me. So Devonte Parker is at 32 for me. Uh, we talked about Russell Gage at 31 for me. Donald Mooney at 33. Devonte yep. Parker sandwiched in between them. So I think you can still look his way, but uh, you have to obviously be concerned that the ball is, could go completely to Jalen Waddle like it did last week, and Devonte Parker just won't see any targets again.
Jalen Waddle is so good, dude. It's just it's there, so it's so great to watch. You know, there are there are players, and you talk about like hits and misses, and there are players that we, I absolutely whiffed on this year. Everyone does. Everyone as an analyst sure. will just completely whiff on players, one hundred percent. But Jalen Waddle still being like, I look back at a video that I did at the beginning of the uh, the off season or like in draft season and it was must have wide receivers and Jalen Waddle was near the top of the list and I was like him being at wide receiver 44 in ADP is just absurd it's mind-blowing to me and that was one that I absolutely hit this year Jalen Waddle has just been everything is advertised and more and he was 48th in ECR which I only looked at because I was looking oh at my, my hits word. I was looking at my hits and misses yesterday Yates uh as to where I was and it's a little horrifying when you do that and you're like, oh God, I didn't realize I was lower on this guy. That's bad. But I mean, I wasn't like crazy high on Waddle, but I had him, you know, six spots ahead. But yeah, such a bargain. Um, and he's great. I have Devontae Parker at 35. I do think that he'll have a bounce back game here in this one. I, you know, last week was so bizarre, but still obviously uh, less confidence than I otherwise would have had. How about Mike Gesicki Yates? Are you starting him? I think you can still look his way as a low end tight end one. Once you get outside, I mean, Kyle Pitts at tight end nine, then it's like Hunter Henry, Mike Kosicki, Gerald Everett, Tyler Higby, Noah Fant, you know, like the, the other guys in that range. It's like if you've got Kosicki, you're not finding a better option on the waiver wire. So you can still play him if you need to. Yeah. Borderline starter for me and not to end this one, right? Uh, I think you can look his way. I've got him at 14. Uh, oh, wow. So up okay. against Tennessee, their secondary, you mentioned a little bit tighter here recently, but still a secondary that you can throw on. So, uh, and it, I think they're going to shut down the, the running game. So I think it creates some opportunity for Tua as a like streaming option, not someone that I'm ranking as a top 12 play, but uh, someone that you can look at if you're in a pinch. Tua or Russell Wilson? I will still play Russell Wilson. I've got him at 12, Tua at 14. Tua or Kirk Cousins? I will go to uh, I'm scared of Kirk Cousins in this uh, in this weather and primetime Yates don't and don't ever time. forget and that don't ever forget that uh, Yates Miami doesn't allow a ton of points to running backs man they uh, they shut him down how do you feel about Deonta Foreman yeah I've got him at 30 on the week so someone that uh, you know we could have played in in plus matchups uh, previously but then last week you know uh, he fell into the end zone but that was all he if he hadn't done that right we are just absolutely right. Uh, he absolutely busted. So I have concerns about Deontay Foreman this week. I would prefer to look at like AJ Dillon, Michael Carter, you know, even Saquon Barkley, Ramondre Stevenson all over Deontay Foreman this week. AJ Brown didn't practice yesterday. I assume it's just a maintenance day uh, going there. Yep. Um, Yates, I mean, you know, Ryan Tannehill, we might have, AJ, you know, with AJ Brown back, obviously it changes sort of the, the passing offense. Maybe Julio Jones is back off the COVID list with the revised protocols. Any interest in starting Ryan Tannehill here? I really don't. I've got him at QB 21. Uh, he's a fine, you know, super flex option. But in one QB leagues, there are so many other options that you can turn to. I will play Tyler Huntley over uh, Ryan Tannehill this week pretty easily. Yeah, I'm in agreement. I have him at 20. Raiders at the Colts. I, I mean, I guess there's still a question mark about Carson Wentz. Right. Gates. Uh, you know, I, you know, I'm assuming that he's going to come off just based on the protocols. But we'll see. Talk to me about Michael Pittman if Wentz starts and if he does not start. I'm currently ranking Pittman as if Wentz is going to come off the list, and that puts him at wide receiver 18 on the week for me, some of that is still a very, very solid start. However, if we do have Sam Ellinger as the starting quarterback here, I am going to drop Michael Pittman Jr. down my rankings. We, I mean, I studied Sam Ellinger coming out of Texas, not someone who impresses you as a passer. So uh, this is something that you definitely have to be concerned about if you do have Michael Pittman Jr. Uh, you know, you got, you, you're hoping that Carson Wentz plays. Yeah, it feels like... I don't know, borderline wide receiver three if it's Ellinger. Yes. Right. Yeah. Is that around where what yep. you think you'll wind up with him? Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, you're Of course, you're starting Jonathan Taylor. Anybody else for the Colts? Do you have any interest in Carson Wentz? I mean, as a streamer, if uh, if he plays? Potentially. Uh, in that same range of like, it would be close. Or, am I going to play Kirk Cousins? Am I going to play Carson Wentz? Uh, you know, Mac Jones or Carson Wentz. So still outside of the top 15 for me. But if you're in a pinch, you could look his way. Yeah, it's, uh, I uh, have made it clear that I, I don't like to look at where I am against ECR before lineup soccer, after lineup soccer, because I don't want to know, right? Like, I don't want to spend the entire Sunday sitting there being like, I can't believe I faded this guy versus like every other expert. It doesn't make me happy. Have to look at it sometimes for the Thursday game. So this week is very refreshing. But it always turns out when everything is said and done after the week is over and everything like that, that I'm always higher on Josh Jacobs, and I guess I don't know why that necessarily <laughs> is. Where do you have Josh Jacobs ranked in a matchup against a tough Indianapolis defense? You're right. Tough run defense there with Indianapolis. I've got him at RB17 on the week. 
Yeah, right now Yates he comes out at RB ten, and I guess I can't Ooh, really okay. I can't really figure out why. Like I always start him. The volume is there. He's been more involved as a pass catcher. He'll be involved if they ever get towards the goal line. Like I don't know, man. <laughs> For whatever reason, I'm always like, yeah, start Josh Jacobs. So I'm gonna apologize in advance. By the way, Yates is gonna be doing the IG live this week again. I'm gonna be doing his YouTube stream. So apologize to everybody who asked me start set questions with Josh Jacobs because the answer is gonna be Josh Jacobs. Uh, Yates, are we expecting Darren Waller back at this point? Or he's now on the COVID list, so is he not going to clear the protocol? Yeah, it very, very unlikely. Has okay. not been ruled out officially as of the recording here, uh, but I do think that it's very, very unlikely that he clears the COVID list in time to play. So looking at Foster Moreau here, in that same range of Cole Komet, uh, you know, that CJ Uzama that we talked about earlier, he's at tight end 18 for me. Yeah, so he's a guy, again, who's been more productive lately, but not when you really needed him in those first couple of games. You were right. like, here he comes, and then he was terrible. Uh, Hunter Renfro has been, you know, disappointing a little bit here, Yates, with all of a sudden the target volume is gone against Indianapolis. Not the best matchup. What do you think? Yeah, I still think that I, I'm i comfortable playing Hunter Renfro. Uh, I've got him at 17 on the week. So I would be playing Amon Ross St. Brown over him, though. Uh, but then I'd be playing him over DK Metcalf, Amari Cooper, Odell Beckham Jr. Like, I still feel pretty confident in uh, in Hunter Renfro. Yeah, I am at 17 as well. Yeah, it's anybody else. I guess Brian Edwards is, uh, is going to be able to play in this game is what they think. Zay no. Jones is quite... No he's interest. not going to be able to play? Oh, oh no, I was no just saying no okay. interest. Yeah, no. Or Zay Jones or anything like that, right? Nope, Nobody. Nope. Okay. They are all like desperation plays, and you shouldn't be having desperation plays in Week 17. Uh, Jaguars at the Patriots. Uh, look, looks like both running backs here for the Pats are going to be there. So, how do you feel about them? I would be interested in rolling out both of them. Uh, I've got Damian Harris currently at RB14. He needs to come down just a little bit. Uh, yeah. That was still where we didn't have clarity on Ramondre Stevenson. So he'll come down just a little bit. But Ramondre Stevenson inside the top 24 for me. Definitely think you can look at both these guys. I think we could easily see both these running backs uh, find the end zone here against Jacksonville. So I definitely think you can look at both of them. Do you want to start any pass catcher for the Patriots? I really don't want to. Uh, I think that you could look at Jacoby Myers and Kendrick Bourne. I've got them at 42 and 43 respectively. But yeah, you're playing them just out of desperation. And again, you shouldn't really you haven't been relying on these guys over the past several weeks. So you really shouldn't have to be looking at them here in championship week. Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry at tight end 10 for me. A great opportunity to find the end zone here. Uh, obviously, you have to account for the fact that he go could go for 1 and 19, you know, or 1 and 10 or whatever. But, uh, you know, he could easily find the end zone as well. So I've got him at tight end 10 on the week. Yeah, that does just make him basically every tight end outside of the top eight right. is a guy who like, all right, hope you find the end zone or we might get a two for a 12 uh, day. But yes. I agree with you, and I don't love recommending Hunter Henry, but he did come out of 10 for me this week, so I'm fine, and I'm, I'm not going to mess with the with the projections too much when I get to that range of tight end. For the Jaguars, Yates, I, I mean, look, you don't want to start, you know, Daria Gunbowale, but you might have to start him. Where is he in your running back rankings? He's at 32, so okay. I really do not want to start him. Uh, we know who he is at this point of his career. He's going up against the New England Patriots, and, and I understand the Patriots' run defense is you know susceptible uh, more than their passing game, but yep. still, this is the Jacksonville Jaguars' offense. They might get five first downs in this game. <laughs> like I just don't feel confident in what we're going to see here. So, uh, yeah, I've got him at 32 on the week. I'm not expecting to see what we did last week with him stepping in. Agunwale or Rex Burkhead? Uh, I've got you're Rex forced. Bur to, you're forced <coughs> to start one. Of Gosh, them that's a terrible. Uh, <laughs> I've got Rex Burkhead at 36. So I guess in that situation, I would go with Dare. But yeah, not feeling confident in either one of them. We have found the Dare line. Yeah, I'm at 29. I don't want to start him either. You know, but I look. I'm starting him in the Fans Bros Dynasty Invitational against Boone. Yeah, it's, let's go. Let's get him uh, fired up there. Uh, Anybody else he aids? James O'Shaughnessy or any pass catcher? No, this is really a situation. There's no upside. You know, Trevor Lawrence hasn't thrown a passing touchdown since week eight. So like there's... that that's the might be the craziest stat. It's right? ridiculous. That's, that's so ridiculous. So yeah, um, there's no there's no upside for any of these guys. I mean, Laquan Treadwell has actually been the most consistent option and up against New England, I just don't want to play that game. Name me a DST you would start over the Patriots. I don't think I can. That is the correct answer. Number one DST on the week. Uh, Bucks at Jets. Bucks second DST on the week for me anyway. Yeah. Uh, for the Jets, yikes, Tevin Coleman is on the COVID list. And again, even with the change protocols, it's still five days. So if you're getting put on the list now, I assume that means you're out yes. for the, the week. So Michael Carter now, I mean, really doesn't have very much competition here. Where do you have him ranked? 
I have him currently at 26. I do need to move him up with the Tevin Coleman news. Didn't get a chance to do that yesterday. So uh, Michael Carter will probably move up to RB20 on the week. Uh, there's going to be volume. Uh, the Buccaneers, I talked about this on the Wednesday start sit show, saying that the Buccaneers allow, I think it's 6.8 receptions per game to opposing running backs. So we right. could see, uh, even though Zach Wilson doesn't necessarily t target the running backs a ton here, uh, we've seen that more with Mike White and Joe Flacco. But I do think that uh, this is going to be the recipe for success is get Michael Carter the ball here this week so i think he's going to see a ton of volume i think you can roll him out there in your starting lineups yeah he's a real tough player for me actually yeah it's because obviously you know the run defense is very good but they are susceptible to pass catching backs but he's the only weapon that they have which means like they're gonna know okay wherever michael carter goes we need several guys going with him but i agree with you kind of like a low end rb2 is where he's gonna wind up anybody else on the jets yeah. absolutely not absolutely with confidence so for the bucks yates i guess we're just starting everybody who plays but you know i i mentioned my cousin uh who said and it, it's a fair concern like isn't there a chance that they're just gonna win this game like you know by 30 points easily and brady's not gonna have to do anything and everything like that so there is a concern but Brady checks in at my third quarterback. I mean, is he that high for you as well? I've got him at five, definitely in okay. the territory. But yeah, I definitely think that he could easily do the like two passing touchdowns, three passing touchdowns in the first quarter, you know, whatever. And then uh, and then they lean on the run game from there. So uh, it, there's concern, but that's really the situation with most streaming quarterbacks and most positive matchups for these guys that sure. uh, are facing off against teams that are terrible against the run and the pass, right? So with New York, that's what we have. We could easily see the run game take over like we were talking about with uh, with Carson Wentz and Jonathan Taylor, you know, uh, just a couple weeks ago up against Houston. It's like right. Jonathan Taylor could have a monstrous game or Carson Wentz could have three passing touchdowns or Carson Wentz could have zero passing touchdowns because they all go to Jonathan Taylor, right? There's some variable. So you have to be concerned. But at the same time, if you're not going to play Tom Brady, who has been a massive part of why you're in your championship game or why you are at least competing uh, deep into the playoffs, and it's like, why, why would you sit in him here against the New York Jets? All right, Cousin Ryan, listen up. Yates is telling you to start Tom Brady. I agree, by the way, with it, of course. Um, all right, so with the running game, Yates, you know, I want to push Ronald Jones higher in my rankings, um, but he's nine right now, which is which is plenty high. I, but it feels like I want to rank him fifth, and that's where fantasy managers want to start him. Where do you have him this week? I have him at five. So yeah. I am 100% playing Ronald Jones. And there are very, you know, when you talk about like the start sit uh, with Josh yeah. Jacobs and people are going to ask about Ronald Jones, the answer is most likely going to be Ronald Jones. Oh, uh, this is a situation where you've got to start Ronald Jones as a top five play against the New York Jets run defense hey. here. You got it. <laughs> it's splitting hairs, man, because it's like, I don't want to bench Joe Mixon for him. Right. You know, I don't, right. you know, I don't like that. That's sort of where I am. But regardless, yes, start Ronald Jones, you crazy bastards. Okay. <laughs> uh, for wide receiver Yates, I have Antonio Brown right now as a top five wide receiver. Tell me why I'm wrong. Oh, as a top five. Uh, yes. I am not there. I have him at nine. So we flipped it with uh, Ronald Jones and Antonio Brown. Uh, so yes, but I think, you know, he's a, he's a locked in play. Uh, one thing to remember, and I, I actually think that this narrative, I forgot who tweets it out. I think uh, Adam Leviton from uh, Establish the Run tweets out all the incentives. And you know Brady loves Brown and wants to get him there. I think right. Brown needs like 280 yards over his last two games or something like that to reach some sort of incentive. So I could see Brady just right. be like, here you go. Here, you're going to get it. So I do think this is a good game for Brown. And by the way, all the narrative around like, oh, they're going to dominate, blah, blah. That's just narrative. As you can see, I have Tom Brady at three and Antonio Brown at, at uh, four for me right now. Probably I'll switch him with Debo uh, when all is said and done, um, but I'm not concerned about it. And uh, yeah, it's, we're not expecting Mike Evans, right? I mean, I know he's on the cover list, but it sounds like he's he's off it or he's back at practice or whatever. But in a game, they're going to win handily. We're not expecting them to push him with that hamstring, right? No, I think that they play it safe. They just, you know, he was still listed as week to week. So uh, I'm really not expecting him back this week. And even if he does, I, I don't know why they would bring him back, right? No. You mentioned it. Like, they're they're gearing up for a deep playoff run. It's like, just keep Mike Evans healthy. Uh, yep. Keep him out one more game. So, yeah, if he plays, I mean, low-end wide receiver, too, I think you have to consider him based on the matchup, but I'm not expecting a ton. And Rob Gronkowski, again, quiet here for a couple games, but you're still starting him, right? Yes, up against the Jets. Yeah, you're still starting Rob Gronkowski. I've got him at four on the week. And no other wide receiver, right? Like, on the box. No, we're not okay. unpredictable okay. enough. Very good. Uh, Eagles at the Washington football team. Running backs, Yates. I mean, right now, again, it, it's very up in the air. Uh, we saw Jordan Howard return to uh, to practice looking a little bit like Thanos with all the extra padding that he had <laughs> on him. So let's talk about it. Uh, both Jordan Howard and Boston Scott start. What are you doing? And then if Jordan Howard is out, what are you doing, Boston Scott? 
with both of them active, I'm starting Jordan Howard. Uh, I've got him at 22 on the week, and then Boston Scott uh, just outside my top 30. So I think that the work is going to go to Jordan Howard primarily here. Uh, and then if Howard were to miss this game, then Boston Scott would move up into top 20 play. Uh, I think you have to, based on the fact that it's going to be him and Kenneth Gainwell. And we know that Philadelphia is going to run the ball. And Washington at this point, like... They're not playing for anything. So nope. it's really uh, a situation where we could see them just kind of pack it in. So I think uh, Boston Scott would move up into top 20 territory if Jordan Howard and Miles Sanders obviously were to miss this game. Jalen Hurts wound up with a uh, good fantasy game last week, but he didn't run at all. Uh, any concerns about Hurts in this one? I've got him at six on the week. So still someone that you definitely can can roll out there confidently. Uh, it's, you know, I've got him over Justin Herbert against Denver, Dak Prescott with uh, with his recent history up against Arizona. So I still think that you can look his way. Devontae Smith uh, came through last week. Yates for fancy managers. Is he going to again? I don't, I can't confidently say that. Uh, you know, it's a great matchup against your Washington. Job, man. Uh, yes hey, no. com- is he going to come through? I can't <laughs> confidently say that with Jalen Hurts as his, as his uh, quarterback. Cannot confidently say that. But I've got Devontae Smith at 25 on the week. So definitely think he's worthy of being considered for starting lineups again here. We know that he has tremendous upside. He has the talent. It's a great matchup. But there is also the possibility, like we saw Dallas Goddard suffer last week, you know, in favor of Devontae Smith. So it's a little bit unpredictable here as far as which one of these guys is going to have the good game. So you got to account for that in rankings. But I definitely think you can still roll out Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith or Odell Beckham Jr. Yates? I will play Odell. I've got him at 21 on the week. Devontae Smith or Hollywood Brown? I will play Devontae Smith there. I've got Marquise Brown down at 28. He has been disappointing for quite a bit. How about Dallas Goddard Yates coming off, uh, you know, bad game. Could have been a bigger game, obviously, without the penalty. So no no issues here starting him. I've got him at eight on the week. So definitely think you can still look his way and think that he belongs. You know, again, it's like once you get past... You right. know, Zach Ertz, Dalton Schultz, like and in the Kyle Pitts territory. It's like after that, who are you going to be starting over Dallas Goddard? So still could, you know, give you that two for 20 line. But again, most tight ends can do that or you could absolutely blow up. So still got to account for that. Goddard still in starting lineups. Championship week eights. Give me some running backs who you would start over Antonio Gibson. Gibson's Gibson's a tough evaluation right now because he also I think he would he missed yesterday's practice completely. Yeah. So that's something too where it's like I'm going to I'm going to answer that question as if Gibson is playing. So at that of point course. I will play Daryl Williams, uh Rashad Penny, Zeke Elliott, Aaron Jones. Like I will play those guys yep. over Antonio Gibson. He's at RB16 on the week for me. Uh assuming that he can't go then obviously, you know, that's a different conversation. You're you're starting a ton of other running backs over right. Antonio Gibson. Yates, I've got, can we just put it out there? If Antonio League Gibson winning analysis play, right there. You should start 80 <laughs> other running backs ahead of Antonio Gibson, yes. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. That's what I want to sort of put it out there. Like, he's a low-end, kind of borderline RB2, but I'm starting Rashad Penny over him, for sure. Yep. I'm starting Darrell Williams over him. Like, absolutely. I, I have no issue with doing that. Yates, I mean, Terry McLaurin, man. You know, he's just disappointed for pretty much the entire season. He gets Darius Slate again here. Where do you have him ranked? I have him at 29, and I don't feel confident in that. You know, that it's it's really sad because I love Terry McLaurin, and I think that he could be a top five fantasy producer if uh, he had competent quarterback play. But this is just not working this year. It's not working. And so McLaurin, there's a very good possibility that he moves even further down than this, uh, than 29 by the time we get to line a rankings lock on Sunday. Yep. I agree. Uh, Nobody else on the Washington football team, right? Correct. For the Ravens, I mean, Yates, my guess is we're going to hear that Lamar Jackson is ruled out. Um, But we can analyze it both ways. He just, you know, he practiced Wednesday, looked real gimpy, uh, and then didn't practice Thursday. But analyze it both ways. If Lamar Jackson starts, are you starting him? If he doesn't, are you willing to start Tyler Huntley? I think even if he starts, seeing that video of him just like limping around the field uh, was just, you know, you're like, there's no way that he can play. And even if he does play, he's not going to be Lamar. And the reason why we like Lamar Jackson for fantasy football is his mobility and what he can do as a runner. So there's absolutely no way uh, I'm anticipating that he's not going to suit up here. I have Tyler Huntley at 15 on the week. Uh, in place of Lamar Jackson. So even if Lamar plays, though, I think that you got to put him like in that Ryan Tannehill, Davis Mills, Jared Goff territory, right? Like you can't confidently start Lamar Jackson, even if he is the starter for Baltimore. Yeah, and I'm getting again, uh, the other one is the Trey Lance versus either Lamar or either Tyler Huntley. Like it's Lance for me. I I, I realize that there's uncertainty, but there's just Yates. I can't imagine 
against this defense that suddenly Lamar Jackson just going to come out with a big game after right. what we saw on Wednesday, right? I mean, it's been weeks since his ankle injury. So. Well, and two, it's not like Lamar Jackson was producing as like the QB one when he was right. healthy and before right. the injury. So yeah, right. you have to you have to downgrade him. So you mentioned Hollywood Brown. Is that ranking of him, which I think you said what twenty eight yep, at 20. wide receiver? Is that that's assuming Huntley starts? Yeah, and I mean, it really wouldn't change with Lamar Jackson right. starting, right? Like, it, it's not like Marquise Brown has been producing even with uh, with Lamar Jackson as quarterback. So, yep. yeah, he's someone low. F I mean, uh, he'll bring you a safe floor. He'll see targets, but just not happening. He hasn't finished with more than 10 half PPR points since week nine. So this is just someone that you really cannot feel confident starting as a, uh, you know, as high of upside as we were. Of course, you're starting Mark Andrews. Uh, forget the running backs, starting any pass catcher other than Brown and Andrews this week for the mm -hmm. Ravens. No, I'm not looking at Rashad Bateman. Not in this matchup. I know he found the end zone last week, but not in this matchup. Yates, an inactive Antonio Gibson or a Baltimore <laughs> running back? In uh, inactive Antonio Gibson. Uh, yeah, uh, this, this backfield in Baltimore was just, uh, I was something where we felt confident in Devontae Freeman, and then it has just kind of just fallen off a cliff. So Devontae Freeman at 34 for me, uh, Latavius Murray off the radar. Yeah, Devonta Freeman is currently at 34 for me, but I'm looking at my rankings. I'm like, no, no, that's got to right. fall to like 38 right off the bat. Uh, so, yeah, I agree. Avoid entirely. For the Rams, um, you're starting, of course, Cooper Cup. Let's talk about the other wide receivers, though. Yeah, it's Odell and Van Jefferson, who we have referenced already in this one. Both guys sort of wide receiver three-ish for you. Uh, Odell Beckham Jr. is a low-end wide receiver, too, for me. I feel more okay. confident in him than Van Jefferson. Jefferson just struggling over the past couple weeks. I know the opportunity has been there, uh, and I know that the matchup here against Baltimore is fantastic, but I think we have to account for that a little bit in rankings where he has a lower floor just because we've seen it over the past couple weeks. So Jefferson is more of a flex play for me. I've got him as a low-end wide receiver three, excuse me. So someone that you definitely plug into your lineup because he brings tremendous upside, but you have to account for the fact that he does have a lower floor. Yeah, uh, and how about Stafford here, Yates? Again, you, we mentioned him. He's been, you know, as always, looks a little banged up, but man, you can exploit the Ravens through the air. So where do you have him ranked? I have him at three this week. I think that this is a, <laughs> uh, a, a game where we start Matthew Stafford, 100%. I love it. Aggressive. Uh, for the running backs, Yates, obviously no Daryl Henderson. I'll mention Cam Akers in a second, but where do you have Sonny Michelle ranked? In a tough, you know, tough matchup here uh, yeah. against Baltimore. Yep, tougher matchup on the ground. Uh, so I've got Sonny Michelle at RB9. I think that mm -hmm. you uh, can confidently start him, but might not have, you know, the the top five upside, but definitely still belongs in starting lineups. And yeah, it's, you're going to get a question on Instagram. I promise you about oh, yeah. Cam Akers. If he is, I got active. them last I, week. <laughs> oh, did <laughs> I don't expect Cam Akers to be active actually in this game. No. Maybe. But even if he is, yeah, it's not going anywhere near him, correct? Nope. Even if he is active, uh, he's not gonna he's not gonna suddenly walk back in and be like, here's the twenty eight carries that Sony Michelle's getting. You know, like yeah. there's no way. Uh it, no way. So I think that uh if Akers is active, he's gonna see like three, four carries just to be able to kind of get his feet back underneath him. But no, you cannot even if he is active, you cannot look his way. Uh Yates, there is a tight end going against Baltimore in this game. His name is Tyler Higby. Do you want to start him? I think you can. I've got him at 13. Baltimore allowing yeah. the sixth most fantasy points to opposing tight ends this year. Uh, again, I talked about where I've got Matthew Stafford up at QB3. So if I've got Stafford that high, uh, then I think that we can look Tyler Higby's way. I'm definitely going to be starting Tyler Higby in at least one championship matchup, and I'm going to feel dirty, but I think <laughs> it's going to be okay. Broncos at the Chargers. Uh, Austin Eckler is back. Yates, do you think Justin Jackson is going to factor in at all here after that huge game last week? I think he'll factor in, but not enough for me to feel confident looking his way from a fantasy perspective. So I think you'll see some work, but even with that being the case and me projecting that, I still have Austin Eckler at RB4 on the week. You know, like you're still rolling out uh, Eckler with supreme confidence. So uh, yeah, Justin Jackson, though, way, way down the list for me. I, I'm starting Austin Eckler, too. I'm third. I will say, though, Yates, in the back of my mind, it is the Allen Robinson, I lost 10 pounds. Tyreek Hill, I was exhausted. Tyler Lockett, I was exhausted. And Eckler did have symptoms. He talked about it on the show with Liz Loza. So I, I just, I, I really hope, you know, given the fact that we've been a little bit out here from the time that he had COVID, that he is back to 100% and ready to fully go. Um, but I do have that in the back of my mind, just as a little yep. worry as to whether or not he's 100%. With that said, Unless I hear something about that, I'm ranking him, obviously, right, as a exactly. top quarterback, yes. Uh, and Justin Herbert, Yates, are you willing, you know, to roll the dice after last week's kind of weird game? Yeah, definitely weird game. Uh, I'm willing to roll the dice. I've got him at seven. Uh, Denver, mm -hmm. tougher matchup. We saw them shut down Joe Burrow just a couple weeks ago. So I, I, I do have concerns here. But again, Herbert's 
excuse me, been a big reason for why you got to this point. Uh, so I think you can still still look his way uh, as a mid-range QB1. And how about the receivers here, Yates? Everyone's back. So, you yep. know, Mike Williams is back. You've got still Keenan Allen, obviously Palmer, scored the touchdown last week. How do you feel about all the receivers, really? Yeah, so Keenan Allen is at 14 on the week for me. I uh, feel pretty confident with that ranking. Uh, Bryce Callahan landing on the COVID list for Denver yep. as the slot corner. So uh, we should see, I think, Kyle Fuller move back into the slot there to guard him. So a little bit uh, more room to roam there with Keenan Allen. Feel confident in him. Mike Williams, I've been, you know, I've said, like, I cannot confidently rank or accurately rank Mike Williams this entire year. Uh, so we have no idea what we're going to get from him week in a week out. I've got him at 27 currently. There's a possibility that he rises, but uh, still someone that I, I do have concerns about. And then after that, you know, I was excited about Josh Palmer. He's someone now that is a, like, he's just inside my top 48 wide receivers on the week. You know, just, we don't know what his role is going to be. Uh, do we have, have we heard anything about Jalen Guyton? No, actually, I haven't. Unless I missed it, I didn't see that he was activated. Was yeah, he? that's that's been my thing, too. I've been looking to see if I could find anything on Jalen Guyton, because yeah. if he is active, then Josh Palmer's completely off the radar. But if Guyton isn't or isn't cleared or you know is not active yeah. for this game, then Palmer it would remain in that like top 48. So a flex in deeper, deeper formats. Jared Cook Yates at all? Uh, you uh, desperation play you know i've got him at 15 uh so you're playing him just for the opportunity that he could find the end zone but that's really it i do like when i ask a question you're like ah, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> that's how i feel about uh most of my decisions this week running back to eights uh against the chargers that's usually good but we assume drew lock is going to be starting in this one at least that was a report earlier in the week so how yep. do you feel about both Javante williams and melvin gordon who combined for like i don't know 15 yards rushing last week i think that's generous uh i <laughs> with uh with Javante williams with melvin gordon i've got them at 19 and 23 respectively with williams uh being at 19. so i think with with drew lock being the starting quarterback i do have concerns about what this offense is going to be able to do are they going to even be able to move the ball are they going to be able to pick up first downs i understand the matchup is great on the ground uh and we could see denver completely commit to the run game but you know just say like we're not going to put the ball in drew lock's hands which is why right. I do not like any of the receiving options this week. Um, so, uh, yeah, you have to be concerned with that. But based on what we saw last week, uh, you uh, you can't feel confident ranking these guys as top 15 plays. Yeah. Is there anybody else really on the Broncos who you'd consider starting? I mean, I think the closest for me might be Judy, who I have at wide receiver 40. I have. It would be Judy for me. And I have Judy at 45, you know, and yeah. Noah Fant at 14 in my tight end ranking yeah i'm that, 16 i'm, I'm sick like I, i'm running i don't want any part yep. of it i will be forced to start albert oh again in the dynasty invitational <laughs> against boone because that's where we are but yeah just with drew lock it just i mean not like the value of any of these guys was great with bridgewater but drew lock absolutely kills the value of everyone yep, right exactly okay. very good texans at the 49ers brandon cooks returns here yates uh against the secondary that's just aj brown made look ridiculous are you starting cooks with confidence in this one i've got him at 24 on the week so definitely someone that you can uh, can roll out there i assume you just saw the same notification that i did yates uh which we will get to when we get to the lions yep. game there and goes. look we haven't even we haven't even gotten to lions game yet so there we go. It, uh, it works out well we'll get there yes uh our rex burkhead just won people their uh semifinals <laughs> if they were brave enough to start him although i will say this i am in a league with andy Barons where he started rex burkhead and the Dallas defense Ooh. and still lost. And it was, it was a, Yikes. he lost by half a point and it, I felt terrible for him. Anyway, are you starting Rex Burkhead in this game? Uh, no, uh, Rex Burkhead uh, up against the San Francisco 49ers run defense. It's a much tougher uh, unit than the Los Angeles Chargers. So I no, I would prefer to look elsewhere than Rex Burkhead. And most likely you have better options than Burkhead. And you, so it's usual deal, right? Start cooks, avoid everybody. Yes. Else. Yep. Completely. Very, very good. 49ers. Uh, yeah. Yates. I mean, look, we talked about Trey Lance, but let's get into it a little bit. Like talk, talk to, I guess, start with this. Name me some QBs who you are starting Trey Lance over right now. I will start Trey Lance over Kyler Murray. Uh, okay. I will start him over Russell Wilson, Taysom Hill, yep. Tua Tungavailoa, Tyler Huntley. That's really the range. Kirk Cousins. Like I am feeling very confident in Trey Lance and his upside. Uh, I, I talked about this again a little bit earlier, but like the unknown, and I got a question on the Discord stages of like Trey Lance or Taysom Hill. And it's like, well, both kind of fall into the same bucket, for, but for different reasons, right? Trey Lance has a lower floor just because like we don't know exactly what he's going to be. We haven't seen him in a long time. So uh, we haven't, you know, we don't exactly know what we're going to get. 
but the upside is through the roof up against Houston. With Taysom Hill, he has a lower floor because of his play, but he has a higher uh, ceiling because of his rushing ability. So I will go with Trey Lance because of his ability. He got what, 16 carries the first game that he was out here yeah. uh, earlier this season against Arizona. He was inches away from finding the end zone, which I remember he got stopped on like fourth and goal yes, like right correct. at the goal line, yes. right inches. So he would have been a top 12 quarterback if he had if he had been able to cross the goal line there. And that was against Arizona, right? This is up against Houston. So I Trey Lance has top five upside this week. I wouldn't be shocked. Uh, I would love to see it. I wouldn't be shocked if he finishes the QB one on the week, you know, just because of the matchup and because of his rushing ability and what he can do on the ground. So I am really, really bullish on Trey Lance this week. I think that he's going to win people some cha uh, fantasy championships. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I do have Murray still a spot ahead of Lance, um, but I, I can't you know, crush you for having it the other way whatsoever. Yeah, I think so too. I guess the question for me, Yates, is in a game where they are, last I saw in betting pros, they were favored by 12 and a half points at this one. Um, you probably don't think Lance needs to chuck the ball around all that much. Does that lower your evaluation? Maybe not of Debo Samuel as much because he's basically a quasi running back, but certainly of either Brandon Ayuk or George Kittle. Well, it's the same thing with we talked about, like with uh, the streaming matchups with Brady and the New York Jets, it's like where, where you have these positive matchups that are great for both running backs and wide receivers. There is some volatility because you could see the the points flow one specific way rather than, you know, spread out evenly. So I think with Ayuk, he is someone that you have to consider as a top 24 play because of the because of the matchup, because of his upside. But you also have to recognize that he has a lower floor because all the points could go to the running backs. They could, you know, we could see them just lean on the run game, especially with Trey Lance involved. Like we could see them run the ball 30 plus times in this one with Debo yep. Samuel, with Elijah Mitchell, if he plays with Jeff Wilson, whatever the case may be. So you have to account for that. But yet at the same time, there's ridiculous upside with Ayuk. Yeah, I, I have Ayuk lower Yates. I'll, I'll be honest. I am at 33 um, just because I don't trust Lance yet as a passer, and I don't know how many pass attempts we're going to need to see. And I think the difference between this one and a game like Brady is that, like, we don't know. You can give the running backs, you know, 25 carries if you want in this game, but you also might see Lance have, again, 15 carries, and, and that's really going to chew up the plays that you're going to have. You don't have that with, like, a Tom Brady type sure. of thing. So I really could see the pass attempts limited. You're obviously starting George Kittle. You're obviously starting Debo Samuel. But for me, Ayuk is a guy who I still have ranked as a wide receiver three, but a little lower end. Meanwhile, the running backs, Yates, Elijah Mitchell's return to limited practice. I guess break it down for me. If Elijah Mitchell goes, where you rank him and Wilson? And then if Mitchell is out, where you would rank Wilson? Ton of questions already this week about Elijah Mitchell. Uh, yep. And I think that here's here's the breakdown. If Elijah Mitchell plays, you're playing him. Like yep. he's going to be good enough to go. He know, you know what the workload is when he's healthy and active. So uh, up against Houston, he would be a borderline top 12 play for me, maybe even higher than that. So, uh, you know, he's locked into starting lineups. I just need to see what the practice reports are here today. And then, uh, you know, just to see what what the news is leading up to the weekend. But with uh, if he can't go, then Jeff Wilson immediately just gets plugged right back in. Right. Uh, I probably would play him as a top 15 play. I wouldn't have him as high as Mitchell, uh, yep. but I still think the upside is absolutely there. So I'm, I would definitely start Mitchell as well. I, I have him a little lower right now. I'm ranking him as if he's going to play. I'm at 17. And really the reason just is Yates is part of his value comes from the overwhelming volume that he has, right? He just dominates those touches. Right. Given that it's his first game back, given how favored they are, I could see them basically not giving him, right, the 23 or 24 carries or whatever. Sure. That we and did Trey Lance, back. too. He'll take some of those Correct. overall exactly rushing right. attempts. That'll, that'll probably make him more efficient, but might give him less volume necessarily. So, again, a guy, though, who I would roll out with confidence, just a little lower than you. But, again, if he does not start, then I am rolling out Jeff Wilson, who, again, who has come through yep. for the most part for fantasy managers of late, to my great happiness, <laughs> as you well know. Uh, Cardinals at the Cowboys. Yeah, so you mentioned it. You're obviously not no longer ranking Kyler Murray here as like just this top five option anymore, right? Yeah, I mean he last week uh, he was aided with he had like that 55 yard run, right. right? Like he that and that really was what boosted his fantasy stock. So uh, I do think that we have to be at least a little bit concerned here with uh, you know yet last week he had 245 passing yards. Uh, one touchdown, but then the 74 yards rushing, which was what boosted his stock. So I think with Murray uh, up against Dallas, Dallas has just been playing lights out, you know, recently. So I do think that we have to be concerned. I've got him at 11 on the week. Uh, Christian Kirk Yates disappointed last week, not the best matchup this week either. So where do you have him ranked? I still think that the ball is going to Christian Kirk, uh, in this offense, you know, more than it's Zach Ertz, it's Christian Kirk. It's not AJ Green. Uh, so yeah. I still think that 
Kirk is worthy of top 24 consideration. I've got him at 22 on the week. Yeah, I've got him at 27, so fading him a little bit. But again, I'm I'm starting him in a league, and I feel relatively confident about it. And again, Zach Ertz now, especially the target volume, is just overwhelming yeah. at this point. You just leave him in. Okay, for the running backs, Yates, again, it sounds like Connor is going to be a game day decision, at, at, you know, again. So, look, break it down for me. Connor starts. Where do you have both him and Edmonds ranked? Connor's out. How high do you have Edmonds? Yeah, if Connor comes back this week, uh, and that's a big if at this point, then yeah. I think I don't think he's going to receive his normal workload. You're betting on a touchdown. So I ha would probably have him just around like Cordell Patterson, right, as a low-end RB2. And then Chase Edmonds would probably be a high-end RB3. Like they'd be a lot closer than what they have in, in weeks past. But if uh, Connor can't go, then Chase Edmonds right now is parked at RB20 for me. I think that he mm -hmm. would see plenty of work, again, as a receiver out of the backfield. We're seeing Kyler Murray kind of struggle to move the ball, and he's checking it down quite a bit. So uh, it's obviously great for Chase Edmonds. I had to start him last week, and it worked out. Yes. Uh, but I don't know. Up against Dallas, Dallas is a tough run defense as well. Wait, so I'm not he... expecting. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Did you say if Connor can't go, you would have Edmonds at 20? Yeah. Wow. All right. You're way too low. You got to move if that if that's the case, man, you've got to because Edmonds, if he if he's going to get all that volume and he's going to get the work in the passing game yet. So you think the passing game gives him a higher floor than that? Potentially. But again, it's a tougher matchup. Dallas has been playing really, really well here recently. So I, I think that's kind of just in flux, too. Like he could move up by the time. Again, we've got a lot of players like I'm still ranking yes. Antonio Gibson like and uh, Damian Harris. I talked about will move down like there's a lot that will shift and move so that ranking him at 20 that might turn into 17 by the time that we get to Sunday. But I'm not going to suddenly vault Chase Edmonds all the way up to like RB12 status. I just, I, I don't feel comfortable doing that. All right. I'm pretty sure I will be doing that if Connor is out. But I do hope at the very least that we get the overnight Schefter tweet that tells us what's going to happen in that right. game. Because it's a, it's a late game. It's a four o'clock or yep. 425 game here on the East Coast. And if we don't know, man, I feel for the fantasy managers who have to make that decision. Uh, for the Cowboys, uh, Yates, we're just still starting Zeke, right? I mean, yep. he's going to he's gonna fall into the end zone at some point, uh, I, I assume. How about Tony Pollard, Yates, if you're in a deeper league? Deeper league, you can look his way, but as a flex option. I've got him outside my top 30 running backs on the week. All the receivers for the Cowboys, Yates, break it down. I will go with uh, C.D. Lamb still as the main guy here. I've got him at 13, Cooper at 20, and then Michael Gallup down at 38. So I uh, still think that Cooper and C.D. Lamb, they're solid starts, but uh, you just don't know which one is going to have that like pop-off game. So uh, I think you can still start both of those guys. Michael Gallup moves down into flex consideration. It gives me great confidence, Yates, when you call out numbers for uh, players, and I have identical numbers. So legit identical numbers for all three wide receivers. Wow, well done. You I know you're starting Dalton Schultz, right? In this one? Yes. Yep. Dalton Schultz. Uh, of course, the the one week that I point out that he was starting to struggle and hadn't been <laughs> really producing much uh, the next week and I and I fade him the next week he goes off and then he's been a very, very solid option over the past two weeks. So yeah, I've got Dalton Schultz at seven. Yeah, it's, uh, Dak is fifth for me, but I could easily move him to ninth if I took away like 12 passing yards for yep. his rejection. So, but he's somewhere in that range and you're starting him, right? Yes. I've got him at eight. Uh, Panthers at the Saints, Yates, uh, who, it, I think the easiest way to do this is who on the Panthers do you want to start in this game? <laughs> do I want to start? None of them. <laughs> uh, DJ Moore, I will still start. I've got him at 23 on the week. So tough, you know, with, uh, Marshawn Lattimore potentially guarding him, we could see him be, he'd be shut down, but the Saints are still allowing a ton of fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. So, uh, it's just a question of can Sam Darnold actually get him the ball? So I've got him at 23, but I do not feel confident in that ranking. Yeah. Uh, how about the running backs? I mean, Chuba Hubbard did gain you nine yards Woo. leading rusher last week for the bat. You're not going anywhere near. No, not against the right? Saints. No. Very good. Uh, yes, I agree. And I, I really look forward to uh, I'm very excited for the day now that we don't have to talk about Robbie Anderson. Yates, I'm getting a lot of questions about Alvin Kamara. Um, I, and I think part of what it is is obviously the injuries to the offensive line. But it was the fact that, you know, man, whether or not it was just the fact that they were starting Ian Book, but he didn't like look particularly good right you didn't see the patented camara kind of like shuffle or right. or make moves he kind of looked gimpy out there people really want an excuse to bench alvin camara this week when they're looking at guys like ronald jones up here right or they, they want to do something like that are you confidently still starting alvin camara this week i am because it's alvin camara uh and we're gonna see Taysom hill back at quarterback we're not gonna see ian book who i mean i watched ian book's college film i could have predicted that the <laughs> offense was gonna look as poor as it did on monday night that game was just brutal to Ugh. watch uh Ugh. 
Uh, it was one of the ones where you're like, why am I watching this right now? Uh, <laughs> Alvin Kamara for me is RB7. So I would start Ronald Jones over him, Joe Mixon, Austin Eckler. Uh, but then it's an interesting conversation with guys like David Montgomery, Sonny Michelle, uh, into that territory. But I'm still starting Alvin Kamara. Again, he's a big reason why you got to this point. Um, so yeah, I still feel confident in, in playing Alvin Kamara. I think we're going to see things bounce back a little bit here this week. Yeah, I... I am too. I have met, uh, I mean, lower than I usually do, but it's RB6, right? Like this yeah. is something where there is no debate for me. And I just want to get that out there because uh, yeah, it's, I don't I mean, I probably answered like a hundred questions so far this week and probably six or seven of them have been like questions about Alvin Kamara for like guys who are usually ranked as strong RB2s. And no, there's no question. So how about Hill though? Yates, he is another point person with Trey Lance who people are like, Hill or Lance, Hill yep. or Lance. Where do you have him ranked this week? I have Hill at 13 on the week. Definitely yep. think you can look his way. Uh, it's a tough decision between like Russell Wilson and Taysom Hill, right? With Wilson, do you want the upside with the, the matchup up against Detroit uh, and their defense? Or do you want Taysom Hill with his high rushing floor, right? They're, they're, that's a tough decision for me to make. But uh, I've got Russell Wilson at 12 currently, Taysom Hill at 13. Yeah, man. I'm with you, except that I have that flipped. So I have Taysom Hill right now at 13, although I have Lamar Jackson at 12. I'm expecting him to be out and I'll probably move him down. And then Wilson one spot behind him. But either way you go, they're basically projected the same. No one else in the Saints, right, Yates? Nope. Lions at the Seahawks. Uh, the news that came across, which I said, is that Jared Goff is now doubtful with his knee injury. So it is going to be Tim Boyle. Yates, does this, I mean, probably not after last week, does this matter to you with Amon Ross St. Brown? It'll tick him down a couple of spots. Uh, it'll move him down to uh, like our, uh, wide receiver 20. So I'll play Amari Cooper over Amon Ross St. Brown. But yet at the same time, like if you've got St. Brown, you're starting him. Uh, even with Tim Boyle, we saw that Amon Ross St. Brown can be a, he's a stud. And this is something where I was extremely in on Amon Ross St. Brown. To begin the year, I thought that he was going to have a role immediately. That didn't happen. But uh, looking at his USC tape, this was something where you could see this was coming. And the opportunity was here in Detroit. He's now producing in a big, big way. So Amon Ross St. Brown will probably move down to wide receiver 20 for me. All fantasy analysts get some things wrong, Yates. Uh, allow me to certainly give you the kudos for it because you really loved Amon Ross St. Brown. And I remember referencing something in a preseason video where I was like, my guy Yates thinks he's going to have a, a role this year. I'm off him for this year. I think long term it'll be great. He is a guy who the fact that he came through last week where people were probably forced to start him, right? Because you right. were like, all right, I, I got to go with it. There's nothing else I can do. And he came through in that game. Ugh, just, just fantastic for fantasy managers. I agree. Right now I have him at 14 with Goff. I'm probably going to rank, drop him three spots, maybe four spots, but start him with confidence for sure. It sounds like DeAndre Swift is coming back here, Yates. So I mean, this one's hard for me. This I, is really I just, tough one. I, I don't know what to project for him in his first game back. So where are you slotting him in, in your rankings? Oh man, uh, right now he's at RB27 and you know, that's just based on like, okay, I need more clarity. Uh, I need to figure out what exactly is going on here. That will not be where he ends up, you know, just based on uh, Sunday uh, rankings locking. So DeAndre Swift, if he's coming back here in a game where they don't have Jared Goff, they're rolling out Tim Boyle. We know that Detroit is doing nothing, right? They're, they're playing for nothing. Right. Then DeAndre Swift has to be healthy enough to receive his normal workload, right? right. Like that's the logical yes. assumption, right? So at that point, up against Seattle, who is a fantastic matchup for opposing running backs from a fantasy perspective, then he'll probably be a top 15 play for me. But I just do not have supreme confidence right now. Like I got a ton of questions again about DeAndre Swift. And I was like, here's the thing with Swift, there's a ton of variables. So if we, if you have other options, then I would play them over Swift, but, and like, and I can live with the potential range of outcomes of Swift on my bench, you know, going off for a touchdown and, you know, 70 yards or whatever. But if I need Swift, then I will play him this week. That's kind of, that's kind of the thought process here with DeAndre Swift. It's really, really uh, tough to sort of figure out exactly what to do with the guy. The big thing with Seattle Yates, which is always interesting to me is that they're not that bad against running backs on the ground. They don't give up that many rushing yards to right. them. They give up a ton of fantasy points, but so much of it comes through the air. And yep. you would think that's good for DeAndre Swift, except for the fact that since Dan Campbell took over play calling duties, like that part of his game had evaporated and right. he'd sort of become the more traditional guy. If they use him like sort of we all assume that he would be used and he was used earlier on in the year he could dominate in this game if he gets sort of normal workload but yeah this is tough right now Yates I have slotted him in at 7 16 for me right now because I do think that if he starts he's just got to get 75 percent of what he used yep. to get and that's enough for me to basically roll him out there 
in a matchup. Again, if you have Swift, it's really tough to see that you made it this far. Kudos right. to you if you did. But uh, if so, I'd probably start him. Anybody else here, Yates, on the Lions? Nope. Very good. For the Seahawks, I guess, Yates, what are you doing with the receivers here? They've kind of disappointed, obviously, for a DK Metcalf in particular for a while. Yeah, Metcalf uh, finally found the end zone last week, but it took a freaking blizzard for it to happen. Uh, <laughs> sounds about right. Uh, title Lockett for me is at wide receiver 15, DK Metcalf at wide receiver 18. So yeah. both these guys with the matchup against Detroit, you definitely need to be considering them for your starting lineup. But, uh, you know, in normal, you know, like previous Seahawks in uh, instances, like you would have Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf in this matchup as top 10 locks, but just not happening here this year. So you got to downgrade them slightly. Yeah, and I will say, like, Lockett was coming through for a while for fantasy matches. I just met more of this last game. Um, yep. And Rashad Penny, Yates? I mean, yeah, I kind of feel like I'm going to be telling a lot of people in their championship matchup to start Rashad Penny. At this point, I think you have to. I've got him at RB13 on the week. Yes. Ooh, I love the aggressiveness. And you mentioned uh, Wilson at 13 for you at quarterback? Uh, 12. 12. 12 yep. for you. Okay, yeah. So you feel relatively confident that, you know, he'll... At least he won't be a total dud in this one, right? right? Given right. the matchup. Okay. And Gerald Everett Yates, is he in your circle of trust yet? Uh, I'm not circle of trust, but I've got him at tight end 12. So again, yep. once you get past 10, it's like, yeah, any of these guys could find the end zone, but they could bust if they don't. So Gerald Everett for me, definitely worthy of consideration this week. Vikings at the Packers. Uh, how do you feel about the Packers running backs here, Yates? I still have Aaron Jones uh, higher. I have him at 11. So he's still seeing the majority of the work here. Uh, he, he didn't find the end zone last week, which kind of burned fantasy managers. But, you know, we, we know that he can find the end zone with regularity. So kind of betting on that here against Minnesota. Uh, so I've got him at 11. A.J. Dillon all the way down at 28. And that's just yep. because I have a difficult time ranking him above some of these other guys. But there's a possibility that he could rise. Uh, but he's more of a high-end RB3 for me rather than a locked-in starting option. Uh, I said that we're often uh, in lockstep with our rankings. Uh, in this one, we're, we're pretty different. Yeah, it's you have Jones, you said, at 11 and Dylan at 28. I have Jones at 12 and Dylan at 28. So rethink what you're oh, doing okay, there. there um, are You're obviously starting Aaron Rodgers. You're obviously starting Devontae Adams. Are you starting anybody else uh, for the Packers? I'll start MVS, man. Uh, I think that base he's off the COVID list, uh, yep. going to be active for this one against Minnesota, who, again, we thought that last week Matthew Stafford was just going to go wild against this defense, who was allowing the most fantasy points. <coughs> oh, goodness. You all right there? <laughs> I'm good. Two opposing wide receivers. Uh, and then also, uh, you know, they were, I think, the third most fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks at that point of the season. Yeah. Then Stafford fell flat. But Aaron Rodgers is just going to pass all over these guys this week. So uh, MVS, I feel confident that he's going to be the second guy. I've got him at 30 on the week. Wow. All right. That's aggressive. Yeah, I'm closer to 40 there. But uh, all right. I like it. Uh, for the Vikings, Yates, you're starting Dalvin Cook, of course. You're starting Justin Jefferson, of course. Adam Thielen now done for the season. So how about KJ Osborne in this one? I have Osborne at 34. It's hard for me to feel like extremely confident in what we're going to get from him. Uh, I do think that you can still look his way, obviously. But uh, and he has upside, but yeah, at the same time, like, I just don't know exactly what we're going to get in this game too, where the weather is cold. Uh, yes. Jair Alexander expected to be back at the time yep. of recording. So we could see, uh, this secondary, you know, kind of get a little bit tighter. So, uh, yeah, Osborne's one of the guys that I'll play if I need him, but, oh, Kirk Cousins tested oh, positive for COVID. Oh my God. Right. Look, in the middle, look at right that. In the middle. Oh boy. <laughs> Oh, boy. Yep. Adam uh, okay. Schefter just tweeted Vikings quarterback Kirk Cousins tested positive for COVID. Look at that timing. That is ridiculous. At, during the game, we could not have uh, planned this any better. Okay, Yates, rethink. What All are right. you doing now uh, with everybody on the Vikings? Man, Justin Jefferson uh, oh. comes down. Uh, who is even the backup quarterback for – is it Sean – who's the backup quarterback for Minnesota? I, I, I'm embarrassed to say I don't know. Is it Sean Mannion? Right like that's, I actually don't know. All right, look at this up. This is really embarrassing. We should know this. Yeah, we should, uh, but we are dumb, and it's week 17 at this point. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Sean Mannion's on the roster, uh, and then Kyle Sloter. So, all right, yeah. so Sean Mannion. Uh, good night. Uh, okay, so <laughs> this is what, this is what like, behind the scenes, this is what we go through when we get news like this, and we have to rethink our rankings process, except we're doing it on the freaking air. Uh, so... <laughs> Kirk Cousins, I was fading him to begin with, so I, uh, you know, I'm concerned about everything that I talked about with Osborne, with Jefferson, like that. That still rings true with the weather, so uh, you have to downgrade this passing oh. game like immensely. So Justin Jefferson really becomes the key one. Where uh, do I play Tyler Lockett or Justin Jefferson? Right, like that's the that's the territory now where I think I'm going to drop him. 
Uh, just I, we don't even know what to expect from Sean Manning. When's the last time we saw him throw a football on the NFL I, field? So, yeah, man, this is uh, this is tough. I, Osborne's completely off the radar now. Not going anywhere yeah, near Osborne. Yep, yep, not yep, going yep. near Conklin. The really only guys that you were looking at here are Dalvin Cook and Justin Jefferson. Dalvin Cook locked into lineups. I think he's going to see you know he'll see thirty carries. Uh, but then the question becomes, all right, what happens to Justin Jefferson? Yeah, that's the thing, right? You you still have to start Cook. I think you still have to start Jefferson just because he's, right because right? Justin, he's Justin Jefferson, Jefferson right? right? But I do think you avoid everybody else. Like I I agree, KJ Osborne. No, like Tyler. People still want to start Tyler Conklin for whatever nope. reason. No, don't do that whatsoever. Uh, I appreciate Adam Schefter breaking the news at the uh, appropriate time. Thank you very much. There you have it. <laughs> All our like impromptu thoughts. As we say, I can't even remember who the Vikings backup quarterback is at this point. Uh, all right, Browns and Steelers, Yates, you are starting Nick Chubb. Uh, are you starting anybody else for the Browns? Uh, man, I'm still reeling from that. Okay. Uh, you got to go. I'm adjusting my rankings on the five. I Literally, so I am too. So I'm like thinking about my rankings, <laughs> but I'm like, okay, we got to talk. Uh, yeah, Nick Chubb is at RB2 for me on the week. Like, lock him in. Uh, Kareem Hunt, don't expect him to be back this week. Not looking at Dearness Johnson. Jarvis Landry, low-end wide receiver three. Like, same territory as uh, uh, Michael Gallup, you know, Tyler Boyd, like, in that yeah. territory for me. Yep. So definitely think you can look his way, but not excited to play him. Uh, outside of that, no, you run away from this offense. That's correct. Start Nick Chubb and uh, nobody else. And, uh, yeah, I hope that the Oh, Kellen Browns... Mond. Kellen Mond. How did I yeah, but I didn't freaking think... Kellen well, Mond? No, no, I, I I thought about Mon, but I didn't okay, know whether or so not he was... Okay, so here, Field, Field Yates, uh, Sean Manning is also on the COVID-19 list at the moment. So it is oh. going to be Kellen Mond. Yeah, because I, I knew they had Mond, but I was almost positive he was not the backup, like, direct backup right. for him. Right. So, oh, God. Right, but we don't know about what his status is on the COVID list, Manning. Like, did he test uh, positive? No, yet? not... I haven't seen anything. It just saw that he is also on the COVID list. Yeah. So, okay. don't know exactly if he's going to be cleared. I would like to see Kellen Mond. I like Mond coming out of Texas A&M. So I think that would give me actually like to be able to see Kellen Mond over Sean Manning would give me a little bit more confidence in Justin Jefferson, but as a mid range wide receiver too. Yeah, I have no confidence whatsoever, <laughs> but regardless, it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, for the Steelers, yeah, it's, it was really ugly last week, but of course you are still starting Najee Harris. And of course you're still starting Deontay Johnson. Both of whom did not kill you last week for fantasy or right. anything like that. Right. How about Chase Claypool? Uh, in that same range that we just talked about with Jarvis Landry, I've got him at 39. So it's Michael Gallup at 37, Tyler Boyd at 38, Chase Claypool at 39 for me. So he is not providing the upside. This offense, this is going to be Big Ben's last game in Heinz Field. Uh, I think he's done at the end of this year. He needs to be done. Uh, so yeah. Chase Claypool for me, like someone that you can play, but as a flex option at best. And it sounds like Pat Farmouth is going to be able yeah. to come back for this one. So does he slide right back into your starting lineup? Yeah, this is one where uh, if you're watching on our YouTube channel, which you should be over at youtube.com slash fantasy pros, we have amazing graphics here where talk about like starts and sits. So Fryamuth is going to show up as a sit just based on uh, I didn't get him in with the news uh, before I had to submit that for our video producer. But Pat Fryamuth is going to be a, you know, top 12 play for me. Just again, yeah. if we're talking about Mike Kosicki, like Gerald Everett, I will play Pat Fryamuth. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, Pelissero, by the way, just to just to keep going on the Vikings, <laughs> and you could. This is basically what Yates and Pat and Joe and I do on our Slack channel as we as we debate things. So it sounds like Sean Mannion tested positive on Sunday, so he could be clear yep. today, and uh, he may start, or it may be Kelmond, or maybe Kyle Sloter. So uh, Sunday night football, baby. Yeah, that's gonna be some fun. Uh, can, okay. Can we, anyway. Is it too late to flex that game out? Yeah, I think probably most likely oh, okay. it's, it's a little too late, but uh, all right, whatever. It's going to be fun. All right, Yates, uh, you know, despite some turmoil in this episode, we did finish out the season. Uh, it was fantastic. Spoiler alert, I'm going to force Yates to do one more podcast with me at some point this season, whether or not it's on the Fantasy Pros podcast. I didn't even, I'm telling him now, uh, or whether it's not, it's on uh, the kickoff for me and just I have him on so I can talk to him because he is my bud. But in the meantime, Yates, enjoy your trip to Florida. I hope it goes well. I hope everybody in the plane doesn't yell at you. Yep. Uh, if your kids misbehave as they did with me one time, which was very upsetting, but it's fine. But thanks to Prize Picks uh, for sponsoring today's show. Daily Fantasy Simplified. Use our promo code Gridiron to receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. I hope everyone has a wonderful New Year's Eve, or if you're listening to this after, you had a wonderful New Year's Eve. I'll be back, as always, on Sunday night doing the recap show with Pat Fitzmaurice. I'll talk to you. Thanks for tuning in to the Fantasy Pros YouTube channel. 
Don't forget to check out our featured videos. And while you're at it, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Fantasy Pros, so you can get the latest news and updates to give you the edge you need in your fantasy league.